I was raised here in Montbello, uh, in Denver, Colorado. Uh, transportation back in the 70s was really good. It was cheap. <laughs> it was accessible. But now you've got infrastructure is built up to accommodate traffic and not the residents' health and accessibility. Getting around walking is difficult. It's frightening. I am always at the mercy of traffic. Streets are built for cars. I was disabled since I was six years old, so I didn't think I would ever, ever want to be without a car. As I became more disabled and had to uh, use, start using a wheelchair, I sold my van and decided that I would just use Accessoride. Accessoride is the public transportation for people with mobility problems. I did that for a while until the frustration over the problems that I was having with Accessoride, late arrivals, being late for work, things like that. Those of us who, with a disability enjoy the same things that everybody else enjoys. You know, we like to go out to, to a restaurant to eat. We like to go to a ball game. And, and having a car is instrumental to making a lot of that possible. There are two rules, right? One rule is that having a car isn't the perfect option for everybody. And the other rule is that living without a car isn't the perfect option for everybody. And if you want to live in a place where all of your activities are very close to where you are, you're going to be living in, in a very dense place. Those places are very accessible, they're very valuable, and they're more expensive to live in. So those are the, the choices that people face. Not every choice is available to everybody. I live up in the mountains uh, west of Boulder. I don't have a vehicle. Well, what pushed me into the decision is my car died, and it was way too expensive to try to rebuild it. I live below the poverty line. It's forced me to simplify. I, you know, for many years when I had a car, my primary social community was down in Boulder, and having a car meant I could go to evening and weekend events and parties, and, you know, I was very engaged, very active. Not having a car really forced me to stop. Cars are necessary if you live in the outskirts of the city. We are literally trapped here in Montbello right now. Um, the only way out is the main artery of using Peoria Street. It's, it's an inconvenience to the, to the pedestrian. You know, we don't, we are not the priority. It's sad because it affects our health. It affects our community, you know, how we relate to one another out in public. And many people, instead of having the ideal situation, are really making trade-offs between how, where they live and how they travel. If I could describe my life over the last 10 years, the primary word would be hermit. And when I had a vehicle, I had, I had freedom. I could just pick up and ride over to Strawberry Hot Springs. I, you know, I could, I could do things, you know. But there's a bus service that gives me rides up from Boulder, and my, bi my bicycle is a pretty incredible vehicle, which is just a way of reframing, you know, being able to look at something from a different side. And I have a wheelbarrow. What else do you need? <laughs> But if you were to really get into it, there were a lot of decisions that were made sort of in this context of um, some combination of racial and ethnic segregation around housing and also large infrastructure investment. Decisions that governments and other sort of stakeholders were making about where to locate our major infrastructure for transportation, essentially granting society a lot of mobility, often at the expense of very specific um, people and places. I think there is a greater need downtown for buses and that they are used. But the communities like Montbello, like Aurora, these communities are suffering. They're being neglected. The thing about the mobility issue is more the infrastructure. If you want public transportation to work, you got to be able to do the same things that you uh, do in a car. You have to be able to go get your groceries and be able to load them on there. 
Or one of the major elements of health and well-being is that ability to carry out all the things in life that you want to do. Whether that means having a job, going to school, having the relationships in your life you want to have. This might be the single most important thing that transportation can learn from public health, is to think very carefully about the way our infrastructure could affect different people in different ways.